Hey friends, Kim from Stamping Imperfection. I'm here playing with some Christmas in July Christmas stamp sets from Maker Forte. So I created this card, which I love, and this was so simple to create. I used the Wise Man Still See Kim stamp set, and you can see it's a silhouette stamp set. So basically it was stamping the, the whole image in one stamp, stamping the sentiment around the edge, ink blending the background, which is the first thing I did, adding the gem, and then cutting and folding my cardstock. Five steps to complete that card. This would be a super easy one to mass produce. I'm not gonna share that video today because that is actually back ordered. So um, check, a, check back in late August, early September, and um, I'll be sharing the the video I created for that. So that stamp set I just showed you is the Holy Christmas sentiment set, perfect for sentiments inside the card. I have the Nativity, Peace, Love, and Hope set, which I am going to use today. This is the Your Berry Sweet stamp set, and it's got a coordinating, layering stencil set. And I pulled out a few stripe stencils and a stripe stamp set thinking backgrounds but then I realized I had some shrink plastic in my stash that I decided I wanted to use so I decided I'm going to stick to the Nordic watercolor builder stamp set and I wanted to make some Christmas ornaments and reading through the instructions it wasn't super clear in the instructions whether I should be using permanent ink or dye ink they the instructions contradicted themselves but I decided I could stamp them and since that is for inkjet printers I'll stamp them and then photocopy them onto the shrink plastic and it actually works perfectly so I picked this one because I love the solid images I don't have to do anything I don't have to do any coloring or anything like that. There's quite a variety of stuff, so I could make an interesting variety of ornaments. And I did neglect to take into account how much these would shrink, because I haven't played with shrink plastic in a while, so I've forgotten how it like shrinks like 90%. So these are not going to be big enough for Christmas ornaments. So here's my color palette. These are the colors that I have from Maker Forte. The left-hand side is the neon colors, and you can see how light and beautiful they are. Then I have three of their regular dye inks that are in perfect Christmas colors. So I'm going to use those. And I am going to start out, I have not used the stamp set yet, so those big bold stamps need to be conditioned. So I'm going to use this stamp conditioner specifically for this purpose. And you can see I have not peeled them off the plastic. I'm just spraying this on. Then you have to let it sit for a minute and then you wipe it off and they're ready to go. That cleans off the residue from the manufacturing process and um, then they don't stick to your paper and they you get better stamped images. Now one thing I wish that I had not done, I wish I had not put all of these in here at the same time because you have to avoid the other stamps as you're inking them up and I'm not very good at that. So it does affect the images that I get here. So I'm wishing I had just put those three deer in, stamped those first. And by the way, this is Catherine Pooler's Sandcastle ink that I'm using. Maker Forte does not yet have a brown ink. They do come out with three new colors every month, by the way, and they have a subscription service. So you can actually subscribe to have those three new inks ink pads sent to you every month. And I believe you can also subscribe to have the, the refills, um, the re-inkers sent to you as well. They have several subscription service things, by the way. And um, it's a, it would be a really nice way to build a an ink pad collection rather than trying to buy 72 ink pads all at once. Um, you know, they're just starting to come out with their ink pads. This is a perfect time to start buying them if you're looking for an ink pad collection. I feel like these are on par with Catherine Pooler's inks. They ink beautifully. They have foam pads. I love the foam pads, which is one of the things I love about Catherine Pooler's inks. Her inks ink beautifully. The foam pads are amazing. I think the same thing about these inks, and I love them. Love, love 
love them. The black ink, the Eclipse black ink is one of my favorites. So that red is called Tip Tree Jam, which I hope I'm pronouncing correctly because I've never actually heard of it before. And I promise you if there was a jam that color sitting around, I would have tried it. Um, the green is called Palm Tree and the yellow is Yellowstone. And I think that they're just the perfect colors for a traditional Christmas look. So that's what I'm doing here. And I really enjoyed making these shrink plastic pieces. So there is a little face that goes on that one deer. And then there is a little uh, flower that I'm putting in the middle of that. What I'm thinking of is a Nordic snowflake. And um, so I'm just kind of stamping them together. And I did go to my um, printer next, so I used my inkjet printer, and I did not take into account the fact that this is not an 8.5 by 11 piece of plastic. It's, I don't know what size it is, but I lined it up like it was 8.5 by 11 and it wasn't. So a couple of my images got cut off, but no worries, because the original that I stamped was still in my printer, so I could pull out another piece and just print it a second time. So I have a whole bunch of these now. I fussy cut them out, and then you have to remember to put your hole in them before you shrink them. So I used, it's about a 1 8 inch punch. Now I have this um, shrink plastic tool that I got about a year ago and haven't used. And it's specifically for this purpose. It wasn't very expensive because I got it on a clearance rack. And it's got this grid, this silicone grid, that is supposed to hold the plastic flatter so it doesn't curl over on itself and get ruined. And um, I kind of peeled it off. That The plastic actually kind of stuck to that grid. So it did affect some of the coloring a little bit. But I'm okay with that. I can fix it if I want to. I'm not that worried about it because I had so much fun making these and I think they're just a fun little detail on my finished project. And my finished project is not cards. I decided that these would be perfect charms for um, Christmas tags, gift tags. So I think that's what I'm going to use them for. They'd be great earrings, by the way but they'd be perfect charms for Christmas tags, so that's what I'm gonna do. So that's my first batch. I went ahead, printed them again from my original that I already had, had stamped, and then um, poked the holes and went ahead and fussy cut those out, and I did the whole heat shrinking thing here. And they do look a little raggedy. I'm okay with that. Now at this point, you could fix the raggedy look with some alcohol markers. But before you are completely done, you do need to, according to the instructions, um, use a clear fixative spray. Spray it on there to keep the ink from getting scratched off or anything. So um, I used Scotch 3M clear coat to protect it. And I did that outside. So gave it a little spray. I did not bother trying to like fix the color and get fussy about them. These are just going to be little charms on gift tags, so I'm not too worried about it. So I pulled out the Manila tags. Uh, Maker Forte had Manila tags and white tags the last time I looked. I did not check to see what they have now. You may have tags in your stash. Um, these are nice big tags, so I was excited about this. So I pulled out another stamp from the um, Nordic watercolor builder stamp and it's called a watercolor builder stamp because you could ink this up spritz it with water and then stamp it on and it will have a watercolor look once you stamp it on i'm just using this as a border stamp i think it looks so pretty over that ink blended edge and notice that i tried to keep the ink a little darker on the edge lighten it up as i went toward the center and i didn't put any ink in the center so the next detail, I like to do a little gold gilt edge. So I pulled out some gold embossing powder and my uh, Color Hive embossing ink, and I just kind of slide the edges along that embossing pad. And um, then I just slide the embossed 
or the inked up edges through a pile of gold embossing powder. And I, I do two edges at a time and I like the detail. I don't try to get it even. I kind of like it when it's uneven all around. I'm just cleaning off where it's sticking to um, what I just stamped because the ink is clearly not dry. Now I also did a green tag and I'm heat setting this. Um, I also did a green tag, but I added some extra details before I did that gilt edge. I wanted a mixed media tag, so I used some bottle caps in different sizes with black and white ink to have some circles. I used um, a, an old gift card and I used the edge of a piece of corrugated cardboard. I used some bubble wrap. I just made some marks in black, white, and that sandcastle ink on top of it and I really kind of filled it in just because I love doing that so you'll see that I'm not going to show that in the video because I didn't think you'd want to watch another 15 or 20 minutes of video so uh, I'll show the final result of that I wanted to show you the simpler one just because I thought this was really pretty and I do love the mixed media tag too I'm just playing around with mixed media because I've been taking a lot of mixed media classes, so I had to do some mixed media there. And technically this is a mixed media tag, by the way, between the shrink plastic, the um, stamping, the heat embossing, it's most definitely a mixed media tag because we're using more than one medium. So I'm going to heat set this stamp. This is the piece um, Nativity Peace Love and Hope stamp set and isn't that joy amazing? I picked that one because it was the perfect size for this card. Then I took those original stamps that I actually had stamped and I fussy cut out the tree because I wanted to add a little green to this. I thought this looked a little plain. I was thinking about judging it up with some of that marshmallow paste but I decided in the end just to take that same stamp but with some of this palm tree green ink. The yellow is called Yellowstone, in case I didn't say that. And I really like that detail. I felt like that was just enough detail. You could use your alcohol markers or your colored pencils to add some details. Like you can sketch in some Christmas ornaments or, you know, use some white to add some snow details or like I was going to do paste. The marshmallow paste is really fun because it puffs up. So I pulled out the little charms that I made and I'm going to use some black twine just to make a little tie for the tag but the black twine is actually way too big for the hole that I punched and you want to remember to punch those holes before you shrink them you'll never get the holes in once you shrink them um, so the holes really shrank because remember the holes also shrink it's not just the plastic itself the hole itself shrinks also so I'm going to use some like linen thread to put the charms on and I'm just gonna slide the charm thread through the same hole on the tag and tie all of them together and that will complete my project now before I send this out I'm going to actually clean up the back I'll probably put a piece of Christmas wrapping on the back along with the uh, recipient's name the to and from stuff will go on the back and that is going to complete my project. So thank you so much for watching. I'll have some more um, projects with these same stamps on my blog at Stamping Imperfection and on the Maker Forte blog. I would love it if you gave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. Click that bell to get notifications every time I upload a new video. I'll have the links to everything below and I would love it. It would help me out if you uh, use those affiliate links and just browse through the shop. That lets the store owners know that I'm doing my job and that you like what you saw. Thank you so much for watching, friends. Have a wonderful day.